so uh, uh, you know we recorded our chat yesterday yeah i've got that up on youtube and bit shoot now um and i it, anyway i i sent you a message I, I believe at this point the vaccine hysteria is actually the objective of the powers that be and it is a good strategy whilst a full spectrum surveillance apparatus through digital passports is put in place. The Chinese model, Aadhaar and central bank digital currencies, state monopoly capitalism, Palantir and Teal are key sus aspects to these technocratic wor world views. Um, hmm. And the interview between Schmidt and Julian Assange, I've listened to the whole three hours of it. I've, I've also downloaded the book when when Wiki, uh, when Google met WikiLeaks. Yeah, so, I remember you. I think I think I remember you telling me about when you first listened to that as well. Yeah, so it's yeah, I, yeah. It. So so I, I've revisited it um, and. Yeah, it, 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 and then the other thing that I've revisited is David Graeber at the um, David Graeber at the Ecuadorian embassy on the eve of the Brexit vote. Fucking hell! Okay. <laughs> now, now that segment is really interesting, and and David Graeber says, "Oh, my hedge fund mates." They don't really mind whatever happens in breakfast, bre Brexit rather, isn't really going to make much difference. You know, maybe a point here or there either way, but mm. there is going to be a big crash and it's unavoidable. Uh, preceding that comment, they have a little chat about, um, you know, exactly what is it about David Cameron? What does he want from Brexit? Is he more of an Atlanticist? And Who was they talking to at Ecuador? What? Who was he talking to at the Ecuadorian embassy? Julian Assange. Oh, okay, they were together, right? Yeah, I, I mean it was a brilliant. I watched it live that night, and and uh, so Varoufakis went in for a chat. Craig Murray went in for a chat. It's like seven hours long, um, and. Uh, yeah, I just happened upon it because I stayed up because I wanted to see the result and all the rest of it. And I just, it, you know, it, I, 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 I found found it and, and watched some of it. Mm. Um, it it's fascinating, uh, you know, for, for when it was because 2016, the Brexit vote and then voting in President Trump was, I think, the absolute impetus for the technocratic car class, for the Peter Smith, uh, Teals and the Schmitz. And if you look at the Bilderberg thing, I've, I've put them all in the blog, so it's all linked to. And so if you walk, if you, um, and it was Seattle in 1999, which was the first WTO gap yep. thing where, where it all kicked off. Um, but it's, Julian Assange is, is a really interesting thread through it all. And the fact he's still held in prison, uh, you know, and basically he shouldn't be there. But the reason he's there is he's such a threat to the technocracy. Yeah, Craig Murray came out a couple of days ago. My friend Mohammed went up to Edinburgh to interview him, which mm -hmm. he's put out. I don't know if I shared it with you, but yeah. I must watch that, actually. It'd be interesting to see, because, of course, Craig Murray basically couldn't keep his big mouth shut. And he's the one that basically fingered Seth Rich. And, and WikiLeaks have still got a 20 grand reward out for any information leading to the murder of Seth Rich, which basically was the Democratic Party uh, leaks to do with nobbling Bernie Sanders in, 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 in the uh, primaries for the Democratic um, what? nomination. What's What's Craig Murray got to do with it? Did he blog about it or something? He, he did, and he was in Washington at the time because he, he, he kind of was getting closer to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and all the rest of it. Uh, but I mean, it, I mean, he'll deny it till he's blue in the face. But but basically, um, you know, reading between the lines and piecing together 
you know what was all said at the time and all the rest of it um i i i mean i do i do know that craig murray feels quite defensive about it all um, so what, but I mean, he's an what, he, he he was an ambassador. I don't think he was he was a spy. He, he was like a, yeah. a diplomat. Seth Rich, what was his role? Was he in the Democrat Party or something? Yeah, he was like a whatever you call him, like an intern or you know just just a gopher. But he he, he basically gave a thumb drive with all the information on. Right to do with how the Democrats were cheating. Uh, yeah, most uh, people you see because it was the run up to. Uh, the Brexit vote and all the rest of it, most people didn't watch the Democratic Party primaries. I, I followed them quite closely. And uh, the idea, like Bernie Sanders really was in with a shout. Um, and, and it was only because, um, well, she Wasserman Schultz, who was the uh, Democratic nominee, secretary, whatever, uh, Basically, she moved heaven and earth to make sure that Hillary got the nomination. But I've taken you, I've taken you off, um, off path because you were saying you've been doing your blog mm. and the powers that be. And so you were saying Brexit, Trump has helped the technocrats, or at least they used it for what they're doing. Well, no, what, what, what it was, 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 was it frightened them to death because they, that, that what they hadn't developed their, uh, online censorship to manipulate people to the extent that they would act against their own best interests yeah. basically people turned out to be rather more clued in to what their best interests were served by uh yeah. the, 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 than, than these people the politicians the technocrats the silicon value or oligarchs and all the rest of it thought they were we talked all about this we we we, we we did, we did another one of our chats, which is called Tyranny of the Nerds, which was in 2019, again. Yeah. Uh, and we, I, I listened to that again this afternoon, um, and, and we covered a lot of the points. And, and you know, you, um, uh, so I'm kind of picking up from where I left off with my research for... Um, for the Grub Street Journal and stuff, right. the Alexandria, okay. the OIP stuff, listening to um, Julian Assange talking about Bitcoin, talking about point to point mobile telephone networks, even with the phone network being down. Um, I, I, it, it's it, it, there's so much in that interview. Um, they, you, they, you know that they Eric, well, the, the disc, Eric Smith and and, and 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 Julian Assange in that, you know, there's so much in it, Ranjan. It's, but but it all points back. It does all point back to Ardha. It all points back to the Chinese social point system, and it points very very much to um, this technocrat. I mean, it even ties back in when we had our discussion about the tyranny of the nerds. We had a long chat about um, Dominic Cummings and I mentioned a blog that an American physicist had done, right? Um, and I basically, I, I found out today, he committed suicide, the, the guy. He's called um, Su Cheng Zhang. And, and he, he was uh, tipped, to, tipped to get a, a Nobel Prize. But at the time that all the Huawei, Huawei stuff turned out and the potential Chinese war and all the rest of it, he committed suicide at that time. So, so uh, there are. When's he, uh, uh, what, the end of 2018? Yeah. And, okay. and Dominic Cummings had actually mentioned, uh, he, 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 he'd done a blog at that time. It was before he'd gone back to Downing Street, obviously. Um, yeah. But, you know, and we had a long chat about um, Pete North and Dr. Uh, whatever he's called, the uh, Booker's joint yeah, Richard. right, Richard North. And we were trying to figure out what side he was on. Well, he's a technocrat, of course. And, and um, you know, but, but I think aligned to NATO. And of course, 
um, in your interview with David about uh, uh, the, the the northern Turkish, northern Iraqi Kurds, he, he actually yeah. talks a lot about NATO and the relationship between NATO and Turkey. Um, he, actually, he actually asked me, uh, not on that occasion, but a year later, when I did that one that we called the Yellow Vets, afterwards, he said to me, um, uh, do you know anyone with clout? Uh, and he would have taken anyone, really, like anyone with clout. Because at the time, he was trying to organise a no-fly zone over that area. And so, you know, he would have taken, you know, any US general or anything like that. But I suppose he might have thought, you know, that I might know someone who knows someone or something like that. Who knows? But he was he was asking me if I know anyone that could help persuade, you know. Mm. Uh, off the, well, off the yeah, I mean, I, you see. I think it's but in terms of people that have told the truth and been close to power, um, mm. it's a question of trying to just position them. I mean, so, so Steve Keen, he's gone all climate changey, right? And Green New Dealy. Um, David obviously signed that Extinction Rebellion letter, you know, and that. Yeah, but but David was very, very uncomfortable with Extinction Rebellion. He really yeah. was. Yeah, well, I know you've told me that. Um, so, but but it, 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 the other person who signed it is Noam Chomsky. And it, my view has been that a lot of people who had made, maybe sat on the fence as regards being a gatekeeper, controlled opposi opposition or kind of tolerated at the fringes of uh, public uh, notoriety, as it were, um, have been forced to either come into the tent or be silenced. And of course, the fact that Julian Assange is still in Belmarsh tends to suggest that he refused to be silenced. The same goes for Craig Murray. Um, but, you know, others have perhaps not been as uh, able to stand up to it. And I, I'm not judging them. I mean, you know, it's, you, you don't know what sort of compromise threats of violence, blah, 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 it possibly be. I mean, that's with both David and David Graber now and with Julian Assange, they both talk the language of the state monopoly on on, on violence i mean they, they, they both got a really strong kind of anarchist sense of the state monopoly on violence um and you know structural violence within uh uh post-industrial uh financialized state monopoly capitalism which is where we're at now uh People like Adam Tickell, they they call it post Fordism. <laughs> you know, that's their night. But, but I mean, basically, it's it, it's it's uh, it's kind of like a. I, you know, I mean, it's fairly well known that Henry Ford was a great admirer of Hitler, and 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 uh, you know, in Brave New World, instead of uh, AD, you know, BC AD, they say AF. You know, six that six hundred years after Ford. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, looking at uh, John did a blog yesterday, John Ward, and it, it's still talking about the vaccine passport. So that, reading the comments, uh, the comments are kind of split. Some people are obviously sort of thinking, hold on, there's something more to this than than these vaccine part the, 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 than the actual vaccines themselves. Well, there is. It's the vaccine passports and the vaccine passports are social point system passports. That's what they are. Um, now, when um, oh, who was it now that 
It wasn't Naomi Klein. It was the other one. Um, when, when, Wolf. Uh, Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, Naomi Wolf. She, 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 she was on mainstream US television and said that. Uh, and again, you don't see it. It, it. it. Those are the things that are being kept out of the narrative. You know, and they are fairly. It, it is fairly obvious stuff, but it's been kept well out of the narrative. I don't think too much about that, but I think she's an eminently cancelable uh, old school feminist. That's my guess. That yeah, well, I, I, um, Ali G did an interview with her, you know, one of these gotcha things, and she was brilliant. She, you know, because um, you know what Ali G, like Sacha Baron Cohen, you know, um, he did the gotcha with uh, Rudy Giuliani and stuff like that, you know. Um, but uh, that one's, yeah, so she, she's a good sport, I think. Um, and, but, but, you know, old school feminists, I mean, the, the thing is, they, I mean, they fought, you know, they fought the law and they won, you know, like the old Clash song, I fought the law and the law won. <laughs> it, it's, um, so. I think, I think. They've won. They've won certain things in the court of public opinion. Yeah. In the court you know, of public my, opinion, my, my, my view is is this is that you know if you have a uh, a group, an activist group, or a group that gets great change, right? Um, At some point, you'd become a conservative as opposed to a radical because you've got to where you want to get and then you sort of you want to consolidate, etc. Yeah. So m my view of the new feminism is that um, they've invented a whole bunch of stuff that really isn't a problem. I, I um, And they've been encouraged in that vein by people that want to claw back a lot of the advantages or advances that people like Jermaine Greer and um, all the ones that they call TERFs and whatnot now. Right. You see, you know, so LGBTQ plus or whatever that it's up to now, I mean, it's almost yeah. as bad as, as, as the variants of COVID-19, isn't it? Um, you know, LGBTQ Omicron <laughs> uh, is it's kind of it's it's a little bit like pyromaniac firemen. You know, they start fires so they can go and put them out and be a hero sort of thing. Uh, so. Uh, well, I think I think with all of that, it's easy. It's easy. I mean, it's become quite easy for me. It's easy for us, you and I, to respect people i mean i don't i mean i don't even meet that many people but yeah it's, it, the thing is that i suppose in the workplace you know it's it's to do with people's interactions with institutions and so these terms come up but you know there's obviously humans behind them and things like that and um you know in academia so the terms come up and then afterwards you've got degrees of microaggression that can be registered the fact is, employment tribunals are still probably not very nice places to go, you know, unless you've got a lot of money um, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, these different verdicts Look, and cases. My view is quite simple, and it's this. Why are we even talking about it? it it's that there is way more important stuff. And the fact that it's it's there as a discussion is a track is a distraction to undermine where real underpinnings should be being put under the um the, 
the broad base of, of society because it's being well, undermined. And, 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 and so, you know, I'm not saying that it's not important. It shouldn't. But but it should effectively um, it's to everybody's benefits that we underpin the NHS. And the NHS is being undermined at the moment, as well, yeah, is I mean, a, 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 yeah. as is our, you know, flawed parliamentary no, democracy. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think obviously, obviously, I agree with you, and I think there's a crowding out. The idea that there's recognition of certain things, you know, certain things want to be recognised, and then afterwards they get weaponised in the press and stuff like that. So, for example, the word woke. Um, you know, it gets used a lot now and bloody blah, blah, blah. But regardless of that, if we can just go back to uh, the stuff that we talk about, um, then it's interesting that um, the two things that jump out at me right now are Ardha and the swap market, you know, because of what I'm looking at to do with the fact that you have this whole world of stuff that goes on that we really are not allowed to talk about at all. Mm-hmm. Um, implication of all of that stuff because when you have basically everything that's happened from wall street from the 80s onwards um you know apparently this guy broached it was they so it's david enrick who wrote the book on deutsche bank which i've been listening to still and um i listened to some of the bits of him talking about uh broached it and really giving you the impression that broached is a massive well, not even massive. I mean, he's one of the main people behind the swap market. Um, obviously, I don't fully believe that because, you know, it, you know, it, hap- it happened and, you know, people decided to take advantage of it and to, and to um, you know, and to help shape it and help, help grow it. But um, the knock-on effect, I remember 20 years ago reading that in a BIS paper when I was studying, that um, if you want to understand where interest rates are going, you have to look at the swap market, you know, n- not anything else. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know exactly what all of that means, but the knock-on effect of all of that, for example, they said that Deutsche Bank bought Bankers Trust, and they're talking about Deutsche Bank and Bankers Trust's relationship with Donald Trump. And they were effectively saying that when they were, so Bankers Trust had signed an agreement with Donald Trump of about $100 million. And um, the way they signed it, in a way, if he didn't pay it back, nothing would really happen to him, you know, because it is such a lot of money. And the way they structured it, it was, you know, maybe they got maybe he got, you know, some of his really good lawyers to help him do it. But and, and also there was friendship involved, too. But either way, he didn't have to pay it back kind of thing. And of course, he's really good at hiring lawyers to do all of that stuff. But then afterwards, he had this reputation of doing it in other places. But then. When Deutsche Bank bought Bankers Trust, um, he went back for some more. He knew somebody at Deutsche Bank and said, come on, then let's go for some more. And uh, they talk about the whining and dining and stuff. But they also talk about the fact that Deutsche Bank was still a German bank. So they had to put it to their kind of credit committee or whoever they are, to another committee. And so almost surprisingly, they came back and they just said, yes, go ahead. So I don't know how much they ended up lending him, but it would have been more and more and more. But what they said was that Enric said in the book was the thing is that by doing that, it meant that they were also able to issue bonds on the um, mortgage markets, you know, the mortgage bond markets. Mm. And so they needed to to them and all of these people. And that's what that's where we had the subprime. They needed to carry on doing it to feed their swaps, to speed their bonds. Because and, and the other thing was, and I remember noticing this when I worked for a call centre, a Barclays call centre 20 years ago, I remember thinking, hey, hold on a second. I'm calling people up because they're late on a loan repayment or they're over their overdraft limit. And we're hitting them quite hard when they go over and the system and stuff like that. So we're not going out of our way to make sure that they're OK and making money. We're preferring for them to be late. And we're preferring. I mean, it's, it's all I saw. So, you know, I'm well, sure that's there's a big plan of thing, isn't it? You yeah. know, we, we mentioned Klarna the other yeah. day. Yeah. But then, but then Enric said that uh, what the people at Deutsche Bank did was at the beginning, they were 16%. The investment bank, 16% of the um, of the bank, you know, and, um, and, you know, when the Americans came in. But then they bought Bankers Trust, which was specialising in this shit, 
and they became 85% of the bank. Mm. And one of the things that somebody said, we don't need to have, and so this is kind of very Glass-Steagall, isn't it? Uh, it is and it isn't. Uh, they basically said, we don't need to have uh, depositors because... Oh, we hold on we, a second, Ranger. Yeah. Ebony? Ebony? Sure. Oi! Oi! That's enough! That's you in the window, you daft thing. Shush! Oi! Oh, dear. Our dog is just barking at herself in the in the reflection in the window. <laughs> oh boy! So basically, they said we don't need um, we don't need customers anymore because we can raise all the money that we need on the markets without having to ask Frankfurt for permission. We can just get on with it. So for me, our car is one thing. Uh, but also there's this other thing of that psychology of being able to just massively increase the swap markets. And then afterwards, not pump and dump, but, um, you know, like I said, I saw the local authority loans, you know, they're going for easy pickings. So I saw the local authority loans and there were inverse floaters and stuff like that that had been offloaded by RBS onto the councils and, and Deutsche Van Briefer and How I Know David and all these other things. So what's happening is, they're making more money from the on the run, off the run bond trades, which are literally just to do with sensitivity to interest rates. You know, one Danish mortgage bond and one Greek government bond. And they're basically playing these off against each other. That's what they're doing. So all of their lending is just for that, to be able to have bonds there. And then so they can play this sort of stuff. That's my understanding of, of what a lot of the real stuff are doing. And so they just need to deal with that. I mean, it, uh, in terms of uh, a game, right? At the at the beginning of the game, effectively, as the the bank, as it were, you want to have all the stuff. So, so this is uh, the trestle thing, the great money trick. Uh, you know, the ragged trousers philanthropist. So yeah, I've heard of it. I've, right. Yeah, so yeah. so uh, or, or it's it's Coldridge's um, uh, potato round where, where you know, um, he says that uh, everyone's fancying themselves a supper at the buffet, if you like. But when they turn up, all the seats are taken up the table. And uh, so. Once you've got all the stuff, you then issue the claims on the stuff, right? And then you get people to accept claims on claims instead of stuff, right? Okay. Those claims on claims. So that's what derivatives are. Claims on claims on claims. But who ultimately gets the claim on the stuff when there's more claims than stuff? And yeah. so basically, when you blow up the paper game, OK, what you want to make sure at that point is, is that you get all the stuff back in so that you can sp spin the thing again. Right. Well, it's thing that you say that. And, because and so what's happening at the moment in terms of the consolidation that's going on, people like BlackRock um, and, you know, uh, what, the, what the central banks seem to be doing is maneuvering themselves to have the stuff to back up the claims on the stuff Mental. and so Mental. what appears to be happening is that the central banks through the central bank currency are um instead in, instead of taking any old shit as collateral which is what qe was you know it's like we we'll take any old shit in 2008 what i think they're doing is actually getting hold of securities that is a claim on real stuff so that they will become the pencil monitor divvying up the real stuff when the when the economy is rebooted right do you mean government bonds and corporate bonds well not all government bonds and corporate bonds are created equal well, of course that, so, only going to buy European government bonds and the Fed are only going to buy American ones. 
Well, no, it's a bit. It, it, it's um. Uh, for instance, but, if you if if you were offered a Japanese bond or an Argentinian bond, which one would you go for? Um, I think uh, there's there's a there's a, there's a space for both, isn't there? If you want safety, then you want Japanese. If you want return, then you take a risk on the Argentine. Yeah, but well, but, but basically, what? No, the Japanese. game at the moment is to get people with liquidity you don't like to buy the Argentinian ones yeah. and make sure you get hold of the Japanese ones yourself for you and your mates. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I mean, a, a, a microcosm of that kind of game were the names at Lloyd's and the big scandal in Lloyd's for the, you know, the, the, the very high risk syndicates where they brought in the you know basically they topped up a bunch of people and well, what, put them into risky syndicates well, what, what happened in the uk was the councils were borrowing money from the same people who were getting them to pile into risky investments mm -hmm. it was the same people doing both and so you know, for us on the outside, we could say, well, that doesn't look like a great yeah, idea. So, so at, at, the, at the stage they were doing that, OK, uh, right. Confessions of an economic hitman and, you know, John Perkins. What he describes is where you lend lots of people money. They can't possibly then pay it back. And so you get hold of real assets instead. Right. Yeah. Basically, everybody who isn't in the in group is a target for that now and yeah. the thing uh, 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 and and so um and and it's it's ubiquitous now in the high octane culture of and and and, 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 and assange describes this very thing in in this interview with smith about financialization and and the the way that wages have stagnated and you know, it's he describes it all, and and and, and th that's where we're at. But it's been through um, eleven years of of maturity. Of course, he was talking before the two thousand and twelve austerity, and 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 the business support scheme and all of that stuff. So that's the Buzzfeed article, the dash for cash. Mm. Um, so it's basically the balkanization of economies everywhere is is what it is do you remember how i mentioned um harry merling before yeah um one of the things that he says on his course is he says that the, this is in 2011 12 he mm. said this is even more now because that was before brexit he said that um the days of Walter Badgett were before so many unifications. And because he likes to say Badgett was a shadow banker. And he would say, um, um, that when the center was Britain, there were so many different countries and so many different currencies. That was the Balkanization. And then afterwards, these Bretton Woods things and these bits of unification happen. And now we're going back to fragmentation. Uh, well, but but we're not, are we? It, we're going through the uh, ultimate centralization. Yeah. But it's taking it, 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 it into we're going from monopsony to monopoly. You know, we're going from oligopoly to monopoly. I mean, it's it's. And, and the story of the last 40 years has been increasing centralization into the private sector or the privatized sector away from the government local authority community sector that's mm. uh, and, and and the the nhs is obviously a you know a, a jewel in the crown for for completing that looting process and so, um, you know, a, a, again, one of the 
side stories of the response to the pandemic, OK, is that it will sufficiently undermine the National Health Service to complete the privatisation project that's so well described by Bob Gill in, in, in the great NHS hike. But that in of itself is a is a, an allegory for the whole of, 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 of you know, the big picture of, well, uh, of of completing the project of some people call it American empire, but but it's really of the, the new Holy Roman Empire or whatever you call it. You know, it's it's a. Uh, well, when you say NHS, that's interesting from the Ardhar and Swaps perspective, because you can see the NHS Ardhar angle and you can see the NHS Swaps angle mm, through the. Mm, yeah. Uh, and so the decisions about the hospitals and selling off the land and closing the A&Es, which, you know, it's not secret. That's been fucking going on. It's still going yeah. on. The, I agree. Yeah. So it's a it's a two faced game as well, because you could have a legit you, you could have a legitimate swap, but a swap could be a very good way of initiating a fraud or a trick to defraud someone of something of real value and give them something you know yeah. a bauble a mere bauble in in return a little bit like when the west was won you know they they they, they gave uh native americans booze or baubles or whatever for, for when i first heard of a swap it was when i was at manchester metropolitan university it was a corporate finance lecture or well, it was lecture stroke seminar because it wasn't a big room. And he described swaps. And he said, if you think rates are going up, you need to find someone who thinks that they're not going up. And you swap, you know, your flows mm. of coupons or whatever. So I said to him, so what you're saying is basically, if you've got one view, then you're looking for a chump. And that, I that was... Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm the thing is, is, is that... Said on that people day. get themselves a little bit confused about all of these things um and so it's no more complicated than a bookie laying off bets really um Roger, i'm not saying it's good or bad right oh, no but no, just... no exa exactly but what what i'm what i'm what, what i'm saying is that um the the you know swaps don't sound particularly complicated but you know, and 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 you know, hey, they're probably not. But um, you know when, you know when the first swap was sold, and between who? This is the geek runcheon coming out. I, I think what are you talking about interest rate swaps. Yeah, any swap. I don't know what I don't. I, I assume it was. It might have been a currency swap. But basically, the first the first swap, as in in what we call the swap market, in right. what we market. Okay. Um, I think it was 1981, and I believe it was between the World Bank and IBM. Um, that's the first swap in what we call the swap market today. Okay, so it would have been for exchange rate risk. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But it, interesting that back then, you know, it could have been IBM. You know, they wouldn't do that now. I, you know, the World Bank wouldn't do that now. But they're also opening the market. Um, so broke shit must have been operating around then. And starting to get it goes to Merrill Lynch, Citron, uh, and then bit by bit Procter and Gamble and these other things. And so what I'm also saying is kind of like you know with the medium is the message. I remember once my first ever ebook that I bought was 2010. It wasn't a Kindle. And I remember the first book that I read on my ebook happened to be Medium is the Message. So it's quite funny that it was Marshall yeah. McLuhan talking about. Uh, technology and books and I realized oh a normal book is a piece of technology um, but one of the principal things that I took away from it was that he was saying you know when you read something it doesn't matter what you're reading what matters is the fact that you are reading that thing that you are reading it's the thing that you're reading that matters it's the device or whatever it is it's you know as much as what you're reading so the content doesn't even matter even the style doesn't matter I mean it does matter but I mean from this particular perspective what matters is you live in a nation that's addicted to taking information like this and you get these adjustments and these changes in people's tastes 
And so suddenly we have this swap market and the greed from the people who are purveying the swaps. I don't mean all of them. As you said, there's genuine, you know, you want certainty when it comes to your future. Uh, bills. At, at, at the heart of it, though, it's actually just pure brute power. It, you know, it, 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 it isn't the money for Bill Gates. It isn't the money for, you know, well, him with the swap. Warren. Well, well, maybe it is for Warren Buffett, but, you know, it, it, it's it's the power that goes with it. Yeah, but Roger, what I'm really getting at here is, um, you know how you've occasionally mentioned the 2014 positive money paper in, in Parliament and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, swaps, um, the, you know, so if you've got the underlying, the Microsoft share, and then you've got the swap market of them, those things they become really big, you know, like lots and lots. And I, lots. I, yeah, I agree. But it, to me, it's an abstraction of an abstraction. And this is this is another point that Assange makes in this long conversation with Eric Smith when he's um, it's a similar point to the one you're making about Marshall McCle McLennan or whatever. Um, but but the, the, what's important is the stuff and 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 you know the necess necessaries of life as as the thing is the thing is roger i completely okay. agree with you i think we completely agree the thing that i'm but, saying but, is but that's that it, it, but that's what's important as well to the bro to the power and so swaps and debt derivatives and debt based money um dollar hegemony is not about um controlling the oil itself is controlling to access to it by your enemies it's it it it's having the power to prevent someone else from getting it okay without overt force or violence and and okay. so d dollar hegemony and the petrodollar hegemony is a big part of all of this but not from the point of view of access to it, it, it's not access to the oil for yourself it's denying the access to the energy for other people that you don't want to get ahead or denying the access to other resources to people you don't want to get ahead so like keeping the um undeveloped southern part so of the world you're saying, you're saying, and I'm not questioning it, you're saying, I think I agree with you, um, you're saying, because for me, the, the, the questions are the various implications of a permanently mushrooming swap market. Yeah, and there must be, there must be many. And, and, and so you've talked about why it's happening, some reasons why, but what I'm saying is it's the impact, the knock-on effect of that permanently mushrooming swap market is something where I can see the effects of it. You know, it's part of that thing that yeah, well, what, 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 what J.K. Galbraith says in um, the, one of the episodes of The Age of Uncertainty that um, in finance, there's nothing new under the sun, but there are many different names coined for the same thing over and over, right? And the reason you do that, if you're running that shell game okay is you want people to forget about the last time you conned them right so it's the same old con same old snake oil in a different bottle or or with a different label on it right yeah. and you know the old aphorism that he who has the gold makes the rules okay that so that's in, in a monetary system with a gold standard but in a petrodollar it's it it, it it it's he who has the, the the oil should make the rules but actually it's he who has the means of exchange for the oil that's making the rules and denying access to that resource or energy resources because they have to be done through the dollar yeah. OK. And that means of, of, of exercising control is so incredibly powerful. 
right? That the people at the pinnacle of that power system, are, they don't ever want to let that go. I mean, blimey, it, it, it's, it, you know, if, 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 if you're a control freak, you're going to be freaking out. You know, that that's, you know, so they ain't going to want to let that go. And, and um, so in the Great Reset, and the climate change narrative and the CO2 narrative and all the rest of it is they're trying to think of a way um, to bring in the same system under a different heading, just 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 with a different label. OK. Uh, and so it'll be a carbon standard, but it will still be the same people with the same central bank hegemony. Is, you know, so so. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's it's the establishment ruling class, you know, and that that's so, it, you know, it's. You know, it's the ruling class. You know, when people talk about the rule and of it law, is a class war, you know, you know, when people talk about the rule of law. So I remember when the 98 domestic default happened in Russia on their domestic bonds and they said it was the Russian crisis in 98 around August, then I remember reading certain things and they said, oh, the rule of law isn't functioning. You know, and people talk about, uh, you know, you know how you sometimes refer to, we sometimes talk about home owning democracy. Sometimes people talk about you know, a rule of law. You know, you can't have a marketplace without a rule of law. And so that rule of law in that marketplace, I feel well, that's also what you're referring to here, because, you know, those people at the top, they don't want to let that go. They want to have a functioning marketplace for them. Yes, I mean, it, it, it's. You know the best the best justice money can buy i mean is 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 the the old joke about that yeah. um I'm, I'm, best... I'm not knocking jurisprudence I, I mean jurisprudence is important and and the idea of uh uh the common law and and everyone should be equal under the law they're all very laudable um goals they just so happen that they're that 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 they're, 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 they're uh, honored more in the breach for our present um, cacistocracy, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I, I think you've probably had better experiences in courtrooms than I have. I mean, personally, rules for me, if I behave myself and I don't, yeah, and I'm OK, then rules are all well, right. The criminal courts and the civil courts are quite different experiences. But but the uh, the thing about the civil courts is that, you know, it is one dollar, one vote, as it were, as opposed to. Well, yeah, I think whereas if you're in a criminal court, you really want to get in front of a jury, uh, you know, 12 good men and true or, or you know, 12 good citizens yeah. and true, whatever. Yeah, I mean, even even civil courts, it, it's you know, I I don't think it's yeah. Anyway, so just as, as long as you've got a, a, if you've got enough money, then the better. If if both sides are equally matched financially, okay, in the civil courts, you you you, you stand a reasonable chance of a reasonable outcome. Um, if you're not playing silly buggers. If you haven't got enough money, but the other side do, then they're able to play sub silly buggers because you can't, you know, uh, that's that's just the way it is. And it really is, you know, civil law is the best money justice can buy. Oh, the best just justice money can buy kind of thing. I mean, it, it's uh, uh, you, you don't want someone to sue you if you haven't got deep enough pockets to stand up for yourself, which is why no one in their right mind ever really sues a bank, you know, which is why class actions against banks are actually quite a good thing. Because that kind of it evens the playing field a bit. Yeah. Have you heard about what's going on with them? Um, so a couple of things happened last night on Twitter. One, I got into a spat with someone, which is quite funny because, of course, I know you're not going to agree with me on this, but I actually don't go looking for spats on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think you might say that. Yeah. <coughs> I saw a, um, so there was some stuff to do with Rod Little, 
appearing at Durham University. And so some other people said some stuff about him. I and just gotta um, go and get the dog out. I oh, noticed that in 2000, so they, they keep talking. You're on my headphone. Yeah, so they put two things up about Rod Little. Out. Ebony. They showed they showed a spectator article where he said um, he'd find it difficult being a teacher because he'd always be thinking of shagging the student. Yeah. So, yeah, he said, you know, I, I'd be thinking of shagging the students. And he said, you know, teenagers. Um, and then there was another article that people showed that he wrote for the um, Guardian where he said how pissed off he was that his modem wasn't working because he really wanted to download some child porn. What? No way. Come yeah, on. And, that, and that article came out in 2003. This is Rod Little. Yeah, Guardian. So Good as God. a result, as a result of the fact that there was a screenshot saying that, I thought, not looking for stats, but just having a bit of fun, I thought, ooh, who edited The Guardian in 2003 when that article went out? It was Alan Rusbridger. Yeah. So I thought, I know, I'll go and have a look on Alan Rusbridger's timeline and I'll include him in this tweet. So I quote tweeted the screenshot of Rod Little wanting to download child porn with the Guardian logo. Jesus, right. And I, and I, I quite tweeted it and I said, uh, at Alan Rusbridger certainly did some brilliant work in his time at the Guardian. And I quote tweeted it. Right. I then, so, you know, not really any reaction. So I thought, look, I'm looking for a bit more action here. So I decided to go down uh, Alan Rusbridge's tweets, and he put a screenshot of an off report saying that of all of the complaints against the BBC in 2020, um, not a single one was upheld as being biased. Uh, as being biased. So basically, Ofcom said that they couldn't find a single example of BBC bias in the whole year. What in 2020? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I looked, I looked at the replies, and the replies were basically agreeing with Ofcom. Good lord! One of one of the replies came from a um, BBC newsreader called Martine something. She doesn't seem that clever. She said, "We can only spread the word." <laughs> So I quote tweeted that and I said, BBC Newsreader genuinely thinks that her organisation isn't biased. <laughs> he quote tweet me and says, uh, yeah, but who's going to trust an anonymous account? So right. I come and everyone's liking her tweet. She's getting loads of love. Um, so I reply and I said, would you like me to show you some examples of recent BBC News bias? <laughs> yeah. He says... Um, can I have uh, a recent pick and believable bio, biog? Uh, so she didn't say blog, she said biog. So mm -hmm. I thought, I thought, well, I've got nothing to hide. It just says financialize at financialize. The only reason yeah. I took my name was because I had some court <laughs> problems last, as, as you yeah. know. So, um, so I said, yeah, Ranjan Bala Kumaran. Now she said, what's your name? And I said, Ranjit Balakwaran. Uh, still waiting for her to allow me to give her examples, you know, because I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. Um, uh, and I sh and, and because I couldn't find um, a uh, photograph of me that would do me justice, um, <laughs> I decided to put up the video that you shared with me the other day, the Chinese uh -huh. facial record. And so I look quite friendly in that. You know, you can't be scared of me if you watch that video. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, he kind of wants to be scared to think I'm some fucking troll or something. So I said, there you go. And then I said, I'd, I'd send you my blog, but it's been hacked. My blog was hacked yesterday. Was it? Uh, yeah, it seems to be OK. It got hacked at the very moment I was interacting with her. Um, and then um, she came back and she said, I'm sorry about the hacking. And then I said, uh, thanks. Uh, would you like me to give you some examples? Um, you know, because she gave me a condition 
in a way, if you see what I mean. Yeah. She's like, she, she made it sound like she wouldn't take me seriously unless I said mm. the right word. So, um, so then um, she said, you know, we really do go to a lot of trouble to decide everything, even the words, we really do. And then she said, thanks so much for this. I think it's been really useful, I think. And I thought, she's kind of backing out a bit. Right. Her, her comments are all saying, oh, look at this troll. But I thought, I don't want to be too aggressive to a woman online. Also, I really don't even think she's that clever. So I don't want to be clever with her. Mm -hmm. So I said, look, I really don't have a problem with, you know, like you with Koonsberg and stuff like that. I said, look, I really don't have a problem with you. You're just doing your job. But if you want, I can give you examples. Um, <laughs> yeah, off cob our rog. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. the, is, the way that the way that she said oh you know it's been really nice this interaction uh, so i just said okay goodbye because she didn't say you can go ahead with the examples now mm. and it felt like if i gave the examples i'd just be ranting um <coughs> why, why don't you do a blog and, and 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 just sort of say oh you know i enjoyed the interaction too i've done a blog you can read it if you like but you know i think i've come wrong for yeah, the, no, you know, all right this is what happened, right? Eventually what happened was my friend Kiwi John, he came in and he said to her, um, is your interaction with Runjan over? Uh, have you moved on to another interaction now? And she came back and said something else. But basically she implied, she implied to everyone, yeah, she told in her, in her thread, she said, oh, we love to engage. You must engage with people, you must engage. <laughs> but, but she made it look to me as though she didn't want to engage. So I wrote a reply back to John saying, um, well, I got the impression that she wasn't interested. So I decided not to give any example um, because she didn't look like she wanted me to do so. Uh, mm. And then she came back and she replied and she said, um, poor show, full stop, are well, uh, as if to say that I had backed out. So <coughs> I said, OK, fine, I'll give an example. And I just said, well, for example, look at the way Staley uh, and Epstein has been covered mm. uh, or not covered. Hardly anyone knows about what, what happened in this country, even though JP Morgan released 1,200 emails um, with, um, with Epstein and, and Staley. Uh, <coughs> and then I said, you know, ask Simon Jack. Mm -hmm. And she blocked me for that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I got a block and uh, my friend got a block too. Um, now, so that's one story and, you know, I should do something about it. The other thing that happened was, of course, Andrew Neal, he got really pissed off with Jennifer R. Curie yesterday. <laughs> OK, so what, why? She put up two screenshots, one of his name in the little black book and the okay. other one, the other one, the normal private eye picture of Andrew Neal with a woman. You know, you know that you know, in private eye, they always put up a picture of Andrew Neal with a uh, mixed race woman uh, and him in a... Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I mean he's a real... Looking much older Andrew than her. Neal is a real lad. I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know I, I imagine that he likes full-grown women. <coughs> but, you know, I mean, I, I think he's very <laughs> charming. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I can imagine he's quite a hit with the ladies and same with Henry Kissinger was quite a hit with the ladies. Yeah, so basically, um, but because she's put these two screenshots up and then she said, uh, Andrew Neal, she's pissed off because of what the spectator wrote about her. But then she said, he is full on, <coughs> Andrew Neal. She just said, he's... Uh, well, the thing is with her track record with Boris, if she'd met Andrew Neal at the time, she probably would have slept with him. Well, either way, she said, he is on the pedo train. Uh, I th well, good God. I mean, that, that, that is an outrageous claim to make. And I think that I, I, I'll tell you something. I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the compromise that um, that uh, Epstein peddled, uh, you know, much of it probably wasn't, uh, you know, with underage um, un underage victims. Uh, <laughs> you know, say this. 
she basically just said something, something, something. He's on the veto train. Something, I, something. I, I, that's outrageous. I, I'd be surprised yeah, if he didn't that, sue her. Yeah, hold on, hold on. It's very easy for everyone to be outraged, blah, blah, blah. But, you, know, but you can't go yeah. around making allegations like well, they that have if, if you're unable to back them up. So, you know, Rod Liddle making his tweet. I mean, it's kind of like, why, why would anybody do that? But I mean, if I was Andrew Neil, I'd be really pissed off by that. You know, um, of course, you know, I, 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 I would put money that that's not true. I mean, you know, I like Andrew Neil. I, 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 Roger, listen, obviously it's not true. Okay. <sighs> So why was oh, she? I mean, she. True. I, what on Roger, earth? Calm down. Roger, calm down. Listen, this is what I'm saying. In my replies, the, the okay, thing, it's doubly offensive because you know that sort of thing does go on. I'm making false accusations against people. No, it, I it, know. Roger, calm down, please. Oh, well, no, but it, I mean, uh, I, I, I do find that sort of thing just. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. Can I give you my? Can I give you? Can I give you my thoughts? Yeah. Um. So he basically said, "I'm coming after you, Jennifer, and I'm coming after anyone who retweeted this." Okay. <laughs> right. So, like the McAlpine thing of a few yeah, years. Yeah, but ago. you know, it just isn't funny. It, it, it's, it's. To accuse someone of something like that is, I I mean, God. Roger, you you keep clicking on to that. Leave it for a second. The point that I'm making is this. Um, If she goes bloody, bloody, blah on the pedo train, she's damaged, right? And also, listen, here's the deal. When you say, so for me, it's like an expression She's she's just saying, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He's on the pedo train to me. Because I, well, way- actually, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, if he was in the book or in the flight logs of the so-called Lolita Express, that that's a completely different thing to actually saying someone's on the pedo train. Or I mean, you. you blimey. Yeah, uh, well, hey, here's one. Um do you remember John Burko's wife got sued by Lord McAlpine? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She I got mean, sued for an impression. She said, why is this going around? And then and then smiles. But um, what I'm saying is this. She didn't say he was on the pedo plane. She said he's on the pedo train. Okay. Yes, and, but we all... I don't like the spelling of it. Though. She spells it without an A. But obviously, she's American. So, you know, there you go. But, um, look, I'm not going to say that she's a... Med- I, but the thing is, he, he's, he, he's a public figure with a public image. And someone that would say something like that... I, I mean, it's, it's an insane accusation to make. It's not uh, an whilst offering such sort of well flimsy evidence, be, you know, it, it's saying that he's a fucking pedo. You don't think that's what she's saying? But from that, I don't take that he is a pedo at all. Well, first of all, I don't no, even no, think. You, well, you don't. I don't. I mean, I I think it's completely outrageous, and she should apologise. I mean, I, I I and if she doesn't, if I were him, I would sue. I would sue her to hell and back. I don't think he's got very much chance of winning a case against her. And I'll tell of you course, why. On that, I think he would. I'll Don't tell you me. why. I'll tell you why I don't think he has very much chance of winning a case against her. I mean, she may because not have a pot to piss in, so there probably wouldn't be any point in doing it. But frankly, you know, it's, people should be more responsible. I mean, it, it, okay. you know. listen, we're all angry about this. Listen, the point is this. Where is he going to bring the game? It's offensive. It yeah, really is. is. I know that, but where's he going to bring the case? 
Uh, English or America? Well, he could bring it in America. She's she's yeah. in America. I mean, I you know. If he does it in America. Twitter really... is an American company or whatever. I mean, I you know, I don't. I actually, I I, I don't think that finding a a court in the America or the UK would would actually be a problem. Yeah, but the problem is. In fact, he what 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 he if he had a decent lawyers, he'd probably uh, sue her in both jurisdictions. And and then she could is, choose wh- 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 in in which in which case to answer the the uh, the complaint. Yeah, but do you remember when Elon Musk went to the caves in Thailand? <clears throat> Yeah, well, I, I mean, that guy did sue him and he lost. No, Elon Musk won. Did he? I don't, I don't, I, that's not my, I mean, the, I I thought the cave guy sued and I and I didn't think that Elon Musk did win. No, 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 Elon won in America. And it was called the sub defense. The judge said, what? no, I think the it might have been a jury, actually. I think it was a jury, and they called it the subtweet defence. And Elon Musk's lawyers said that it was just a subtweet, and so it could have been addressed to anybody. But I just reckon. I mean, look. I mean, I don't want to get into. I mean, I don't do Twitter anymore, and and I, I I do think. I mean, I I, I quite like uh, Peter Thiel's thing, you know. So we thought we'd have flying cars, and we've got 148 characters. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'll sign up to that. But I just I just think that I mean, I don't. There's elements of Andrew Neil that I like, and elements that I don't like. Now, when it comes to the stuff about him that well, the I thing, like, the thing I, he's a good journal. He's a he's a great journalist. He's not merely a good journalist, and he's a fantastic interviewer. And I think that he he's does good, bring he's very good. Tech. He, he very, brings balance. He's good tech. And, Well, I I think he's really good at his job, and I do think that he's actually an objective person. Uh, he's an objective journalist. Um, even though I may not agree with him politically, which on, you know, on, on quite a few things I don't. But um, in, in, I mean, he's the sort of person I think I can look up to him, you know, regardless of the fact he used to edit the, the Times for Murdoch or whatever. I mean, I, you know, I, I, and, and whatever the Scotsman for the Barclays Twins or whatever. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I think he's one of the few public figures in the last 20 years that, that has maintained a, 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 a level of probity and standards which, which I, I really admire. Mm. Well, and, my dad... and, and for some uh, American... Don't say floozy, you can't say that. <laughs> I wasn't going to say floozy. Some 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 American dilettante to to uh, to cast aspersions on 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 a great British institution. Uh, it's just not on. <laughs> it really is. You know, coming over here and attacking our public institutions. It's not okay. I mean, you know, he's one of the think, few we have left. <laughs> and it's not, I think you're getting. I think you're getting a bit carried away, and you're. I, I can sense a bit of man love going on between you and Andrew Neil. So um, <laughs> I admire Andrew yeah. Neil. I mean, I, I, that doesn't mean I agree with everything he says, but I do admire him. I, I, and, and I think I, it's deeply offensive that, that 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 someone I don't admire should feel, you know, quite free to attack him because he's some sort of conservative. You know what I would love. I would love to be possibly. Her I don't even know. I don't even know if he is a conservative. I, I, I have no idea. No, but she's conservative. She's conservative. Is, Roger. is she? She's very think conservative. So? She, I, I, she's, well, I agree with Peter. I, I agree with 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 
Peter Hitchens then, you know, I, you know, it, it doesn't really exist anymore if she's a conservative. I mean, I, I you know, I mean, I mean she that's had this, not a conservative thing to do, is it? It's she had view with you on uh, Carl Rittenhouse and all this type of stuff. She's, um, she, but anyway, yeah. But I'd say this. Um, my father, he once said this, which was quite a thing. You know, I still remember it. He said to me, "Son, there really are not many people who I don't like." And then I couldn't believe it. He said. I don't like Andrew Neil. Ooh, ooh. So, like I said, for me, for me I would so, love. So, so why, be... why, why did your dad not like him? What was it? Was it to do <laughs> with uh, News International or something? Or he didn't, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. Um, but um, you know, on a Sunday, my dad would buy the news because of the sport. My mum would take the piss out of him. Um, and he would buy the Sunday Times. So my dad did read the Sunday Times and the Times. Uh, there you go. But either way, um, I'd love to be her lawyer on this. I'd love to. I mean, I've been putting in the case for the defense on Twitter Seriously, today. I, it, it, sh I, I really don't think she stands a chance from what you've told me. You know, she, yeah. she, she, I, and, and anyway, quite frankly, she, she should she should damn, I mean, she should damn well apologise. It, it really is just, it's incredibly bad behaviour. I, I do think it's bad behaviour as well, the way that she's sort of um, been indiscreet with her liaison with Boris Johnson. I mean, that's between them. I mean, the, the, the rest of us shouldn't really have any, you know, it's nothing to do with us, you know, as much as I'm yeah, very angry is, with Boris Johnson. I still think that that's that that sort of behaviour is is it is it's beneath contempt. Hold on, hold on. The issue with regard to Ms. Arcuri and Mr. Johnson is to do with the impropriety in relation to the public person. Well. I think the thing is, is, is that again, if there was such impropriety, she isn't being, you know, if if he is done wrong, then so is she by the same score. And and if it's a criminal matter, she might be well advised to keep her mouth shut. But who cares about if she's done wrong? I couldn't care less. Well, it's not exactly speaking to a lot going on between her ears, is it? Yeah, but the thing is that they should have been basically he was she was applying for loads of money and getting it from the UK government, even when her business was in America. Uh, was it loads of money? I, I mean, the figures I've seen, they were fairly sort of piffly. I, I could have done with it. Well, yeah, but it's not loads of it's not like Matt Hancock PPE type money, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no it, it's about 100 grand in one go i don't know what the rest was so it's not enough to keep a business going certainly not but you know, it is enough at the beginning well i like i said I, 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 I that's something which the london assembly i think should sh should pursue if there's something to pursue uh and i'm referring to her referring to matters of a personal nature between them rather than you know yeah. impropriety on a business point of view and i don't think that her concerns are actually related to the uh defending the uh the public's interest in 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 in, in the uh the finances of, of 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 uh you know the london assembly I, I i don't think she really cares about that do you no, i mean i think the issue is of course the fact that um it's the, it's the she's an entrepreneur you know entrepreneur entrepreneur all you hear is that she's an entrepreneur and yet what is she in the paper for nothing well i i mean i i i i just don't 
I, do, I don't find her story interesting and I, 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 but I, I do think that what she said about Andrew Neil is, 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 is just yeah, it's just wrong. She, she should, well, you know. It, yeah, it's... That's the top so a couple, one of my friends reckons that she's complete honey trap that's been sent over, or maybe not sent over, but that she's in with other people and, and all of that. I, I, like I say, I don't. I just don't find her interesting. I, you know, um, you know. I mean, I, I saw she went on the Delling pod, and I, I, you know, I just really couldn't be bothered to watch it. You know what? <clears throat> what's she going to say that we don't all know already? And it's not as if she's shedding any light on any of Boris Johnson's well-known shortcomings. By the way, Piers, Piers Corbyn. After I finished interviewing him, uh, he asked me if I was talking about Balin, um, which is something. You know, he said, "Oh, do you mean Balin like that?" Because because I said because I mentioned central banks, so. Piers Corbyn does think about Balin, and so does Jennifer R. Curie. She, she's always going on about it. Um, but one other thing that I would like to say to you before we finish is um, <clears throat> I did do a little bit of looking up of stuff about, about Arthur, and I found an article from um, Index and Censorship uh, from a year and a half ago by somebody in India about Ardhar, and I know that he mentions the NHS in it. So mm -hmm. this is when it came out. Uh, who uh, wrote that? I'm, Sorry, I'm, I'm not sure. Somebody, somebody li who lives in a place called Bengaluru in India. So it sounds like South India. I still um, think you should ring up the film producer. Yeah. Produced the, the Ardhar movie. Mm. Gosha, whatever he's called. I, 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 I would pay to watch you interview that guy. I mean, I, 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 I think that would be a great interview. Okay, well, I'm going to start looking it up now. Yeah, I'll um, I'll I'll turn that document into a PDF and I'll send it to you. Uh -huh. Okie dokie. All right, mate. Well, look, good talking to you. And I'd like to say yeah. I've, I've, I've I've had a good good day today. I've I've, uh, I've I've spent hours going through all that different stuff, but there's there's just such a thread through it, you know. Um, so I, I can't remember which conversation we were having when you mentioned Ardha and, and, and you know that aha moment. But we it, it was one of our recorded conversations. Yeah, I can have it, it, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was about six months ago. I think it was, but I can't remember exactly when it was. But but I've got, I've got some on my computer, so I can have a look and see if I've downloaded it or uploaded it. Yeah, but I, 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 I really do think that that's, uh, and it's so off, off radar when it shouldn't be, um, and and all the stuff that is on the radar on being encouraged, it's bollocks. It, 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 you know, so much retreaded stuff. You know, it, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I mean, I'd love to watch that that movie if I could get hold of a copy. Oh, well, Arha, the original, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, he might be able to send us some, but obviously, well, let's find out. We've got to get it. We've got mm. to get it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, mate. Cheers, Ranjan. Take okay. care. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>